cheeky. Just think about how big their bodies are and then think about his antlers. I would probably shoot that bull. Would you? I think. I think we're at least a couple miles in already. Got another mile or so to go up this ridge, but we spotted a bull that we saw last night that looked like a pretty good bull. And with it today was another bull that's probably just as big, so we're trying to get over there and get on them. I'm sure they're bedding in that great big aspen thicket. We've got decent wind here. I'm afraid if we get above them though too much, it might start dropping down, so we go over here to where we can at least hear them bugling and make a plan from there, but Isaac got pretty excited when he saw the one bull in particular, but we're going to get a little closer look from three miles away. It's shaky. It was really windy this morning, so hard to get a good look at them through the spotting scope, but they're definitely good bulls. There's a pretty nice bull over there. He's behind a tree right now, though. I think you might have a little bit shorter time length than that other one. This back end. Alright, that's bull. Let's go kill that bull. It's beautiful. He's asking for it.
Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us in this year's Destination Elk V6 video series. And just a reminder, we've got new t-shirts designed that you can purchase right now at elk101.com slash DEV6. They're made on the next level shirts, super comfortable, high quality, two color options available. This one I'm wearing, which is the green. And then we also have it in what's called the silk, which is just an off-white, kind of a grayish color. So. You can buy these, probably my favorite design on any Destination Elk shirt that we've ever had. And you can get those right now, either by clicking the link that's right up here, or if you're not watching it on YouTube, just go to the description down below, click the link there. It's at elk101.com forward slash DEV6. We had a bit of a screaming match down in the bottom this morning. The whole herd of elk ganged up on us. I think there were five or six of them across the draw there screaming. I did everything I could to try to bring them across that little draw, but they just wouldn't budge. They had the visual advantage, had good thermals, and just wouldn't break loose. I thought at least one of the smaller ones would. They all just stood their ground over there. So after a good hour of that, we decided to go across the draw and try to get in on the upper one. And as we were slipping in, there was a cow 55, 60 yards in front of us. And she looked down our way, but didn't spook or anything. She had us kind of pinned down for about 15 minutes. And then, we were gonna back out and get up on their level and come in, but a bunch of cows came running down the hill, so I don't know if the ones up above caught our scent. But they kinda they didn't like run out of there, but they were moving out of there. So we just backed out. Just sit here all day if we have to. And wait for the wind to die down, wait for thermals to get good, and go get in their bedroom with them. We had 
had quite the insane bugling fest in here this morning. We've been sitting here all day. It's about 5.30, quarter to six now. The wind really died down, so we're gonna go out on the ridge on the point, see if we can round up a bugle or two. We tried sitting a wallow down lower today and the wind was just really swirly, so I'm hoping we didn't bump them out of here, but I don't think they'd have gone too far even if we did, so we'll go find them. There's two really nice bulls somewhere in here. Let's see if we can locate one and call them in.
Aspen's here. Oh, on this close ridge. Yeah, right above the wallow where we were sitting.
Is that a challenge? I don't know. I just am having a hard time telling how big he is. Yeah. He's super wide, I think. I think that might be throwing me off. Yeah, call him in. <laughs> now you tell me. I was just giving him the stay put so he can look at you and call. I'm not sure that he'll take my new bait. I'll try. Well, today was a little bit better of a day. We finally found some mature bulls. Hiked pretty far. Can't even remember how many miles we hiked down into a canyon. Uh, it was pretty rough, but uh, I think we found three shooter bulls today. One of them was a, he was a pretty big bull. Um, he ended up busting us at like 80 yards this evening, which kind of sucked, but uh, plan is tomorrow to kind of go back in there and see if we can't get into them again. Yeah, today definitely went a lot better as far as seeing bulls we wanted to shoot. Man, another crazy, crazy day. We, uh, we switched things up, went to a completely new area, thought, well, we spotted the bull the night before. So one. Way back in this canyon, we found a way to get back in within, I don't know what, we hiked in three miles or so. Yeah, it wasn't. To get in there and a little two track fence line road or something, went back in there. But we got back in there and it's just, at dark the night before, right at last light, we could see, I think we saw two elk back in there. And then we get back in there and that morning was chaos. Oh. I don't know how many, how many bulls were bugling, but there had to be six or eight right there where we were. Uh, yeah, easily. Yeah. Uh, the crazy, crazy part was the next canyon over, there were even more bulls in there. Yeah, we didn't even on hear the way them. in yeah. there, we glassed up a couple more bulls in the next canyon we didn't even drop into. Yeah. And so this one, we just, we had one bugle and heard another one bugle down on the bottom, so we dropped down and I think we must have dropped down in there at the same time all the elk came from all the ridges right into that draw because it turned into chaos quickly and for I don't know, two hours? Yeah, all right. We sat right there within probably 150 yards of all the elk and never got to see any of them. We could hear fighting, glunking. I mean, every noise an elk can make, we got to sit there and listen yeah. to it. But we just, that many elk bugling, I tried cow calling, I tried challenge bugles, I tried wimpy bugles, we tried going quiet, we tried raking and the elk were just, they were bedding on that opposite side from the side we were on and nothing we could do was gonna pull them across to our side. I think a couple of them started to come in. There were just so many elk that they ran into each other before they got that, to us. That could it's, have been. One, one of them, yeah, yeah. especially is. 
Yeah, I think, you know, there were elk, you could hear them, the bugles getting closer and closer, and then all of a sudden the fight would break <laughs> out and probably just got yeah. intercepted by another elk that was bedded right there. Yeah, those two that were right across from us, you could hear them just getting closer and closer, and then they stopped bugling and started fighting. Yeah, yeah, was... yeah pretty, pretty incredible experience. And uh, we kind of just hunkered down all day, right down, we got down, dropped down probably 200 yards down the draw and then got up on the hillside so the wind was good but the wind was kind of swirly in there and I don't know if that messed things up for the evening but we climbed up on the mountain behind us and ended up glassing up a bowl back on the other side towards where we were that morning that we thought was a pretty good bowl. Before we glassed him up though we had another bowl coming in and yeah. I, there were elk all over. Yeah, I glass yeah. the big one across. The, you have a broken fourth or yeah, he's had a broken off, tine yeah. or something. And so saw that one and Isaac looked at it through the spotting scope and said, yeah, that's that's one that I want to shoot. So uh, we, we dropped down before we get into talking about that though, we've spent uh, the last couple days looking at a lot of elk and been able to put a, a phone camera on all of them. We've been using the all-in adapter and it is phenomenal. So it's just phone case, something simple like that. And then you just have the eyepiece that goes on either a spotting scope or on binoculars. And so you're able to use binoculars and when you're ready to film through the camera, it just automatically clips on. And now you've got, you know, it can go vertical or horizontal and it's literally that easy to take off and on. So when we'd see something through the spotting scope, we'd get it set up and you could slap that on there and then you can zoom in on the phone and really get a good look at, at what the animals are. And so when we did that and Isaac saw that bull across the canyon, he said, yeah, I, I can see well enough that that's a mature bull. And uh, we decided to drop down in after it. So. I think uh, that brings us to a good point to talk about failure analysis for today. And a hunt like this, we're hearing, I can't even, you know, how many bugles we hear in a day is, it, you'd probably call us liars if we said, <laughs> and we'd probably honestly be short of what we thought it was. But hundreds of bugles, just they bugle nonstop and you get in these draws where there's eight or 10 bulls and they're bugling every 20 or 30 seconds for two hours. It's your ears are just ringing with bugles. And so you kind of get in a mindset of, there's so many bulls, they aren't paying attention to anything, and you kind of get sloppy. And I think we did get a little sloppy coming down that hill. The bull's on an open hillside over here, and we're on a kind of buck brush hillside, but pretty exposed. And we just kind of ran down the hill, <laughs> didn't worry about noise, didn't worry about anything. We're just trying to get down there before the, the thermals, you know, beat him down there with good thermals, thinking he's probably going to come down to the water. You say we. I look up and there's a dust cloud 300 yards in front of us from you sprinting towards that bull. Yeah. We were all back there huffing and puffing. <laughs> <laughs> You're already at the bull pretty much. Yeah, yeah well, I, I like to share the blame a little bit here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I did lead the way down there and I was hustling trying to get down there and we got down in the creek bottom and got into a lot better cover and timber and still pushing probably a little too hard and popped out at one point and the bull bugled. Well, I don't know if he bugled or barked or something there and John said, he's right there. Yeah, I think John saw him and yeah. he's right there watching us. So he was looking down, he could hear everything that was going on and I don't know that he was overly concerned, but he definitely wanted he, to know what was coming in so fast. Yeah, I mean, even after John saw him, he wasn't, he didn't bust out of there. He was bugling, he was up on the skyline walking back and yeah, forth. Yeah, that, that's what happened is he got up on the hillside, probably 150 yards above us. And with us making so much noise and bugling, he couldn't see us, he started barking. And when they start barking, you know, it's <laughs> like, hey, show yourself because I'm getting ready to leave. And if, if you mean business, I need to see it. And obviously we can't show ourselves to him. And he, uh, he ended up walking away, but I think, you know, we're, like I said, you just hear so many bugles, there's so many elk everywhere, you kind of drop your guard a little bit and don't forget, or you don't think about uh, some of the important things that, that you need to do. And we rushed in on that one, we being me, 
and uh, probably a little bit too noisy. But you've got to remember, these are they're still wild animals. Even in a unit like this, it's public land. It's, uh, you know, they, they have to survive every day, just like real elk in other places. Yeah. They just don't have the hunting pressure sometimes other places experience, but they're still not just uh, gonna drop their guard completely and forget about staying alive. So we uh, will need to keep that in mind as we go forward that gotta be a little bit more cautious. Though. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, today's failure analysis. And just a reminder, we've got the new Destination Elk shirts. In fact, Isaac's wearing one today. We've got those available over at elk101.com forward slash DEV6. And while you're there, be sure and sign up for the free gear giveaways that we have going on. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to do anything other than just sign up. So we've got uh, some awesome gear from Yeti, from Mountain Ops, and from Peaks Equipment including the new sleeping bag that Peaks just came out with. That is a awesome sleeping bag. There's one of those in every package that we're giving away. So sign up for those. And then uh, episode nine, we're about two thirds of the way through. So I don't know uh, how much more we need to talk about the option of binge watching all the episodes, but uh, we've got a couple more episodes here of Isaac trying to find a bull that he wants to shoot. And uh, it's going to be a, a few more days before you get to see the exciting conclusion to, uh, to this hunt. So if you wanted to go and binge watch them, you can go to Fresh Tracks Plus at freshtracks.tv. And that's Randy Newberg's platform where he shows all of his hunting uh, content. And he's given us a corner of that platform to share all the Destination Elk V6 episodes. They're all there available to download and watch right now. So you don't have to wait for next week for, uh, to find out how this hunt ends. You can go and watch it all right now. So I think that's it for today. And uh, we'll see you back here in episode 10. So dad let out a bugle and he turned around and he came running in.